Hi everybody, I'm Bree from the Heirloom Farm LLC, and today we're going to go through making Ocean Breeze Soap. Now this is a vegan soap. It's um, made of olive, coconut, and palm oil, all sustainably harvested. And we're going to go through um, just how I made it and what it looks like in the end. It'll be a fun little video. And so here I'm just pouring my fresh lye water in to my hard and liquid oils. This is called the heat transfer method. And what this does is it uses that heat reaction from the lye and water and it melts your hard oils so I don't have to preheat them, which helps cut down on the heat later on, which gives me the chance to do more design and um, just doesn't rush it. And water scents tend to accelerate your soap batter so that just helps me do that so as you can see it's already starting to melt those hard oils i'm going to fast forward through um, some of this so that it's not quite so boring it's not a particularly uh, fascinating process but i will i'll show it i'll just um, kind of cut to the parts that are important and uh, I'll just pop back on here when we get to a new spot, so I will see you then. Now here I am getting my stick blender ready. I have melted all the oils down. There is like just a few little flecks of oil particles still on the top. That's my hardest oil. Um, and I'm not blending yet. I'm just stirring with my stick blender because it's still pretty warm in there. So they just need a few, few wiggles to start melting down. You see them already disappearing. And I'm going to stick blend this off and on um, in short bursts because I find the more you stick blend, the faster you accelerate your, ba your uh, batter. So see here, I'm just stick blending a little bit at a time to get those little pieces incorporated. And then all of a sudden they're in and you don't see them again after that. Because um, keep in mind, this is really warm. And it's basically what stick blender does is it just accelerates what you would be doing by hand. So soap used to be made by hand a long time ago and they would just stir and stir and stir and it took hours. So it used to take us all day to do, now it takes us, you know, half an hour because of a stick blender, which is a wonderful thing because having a farm, I can tell you, it's really hard to find time for anything. So it's helpful when we can save, save time where we can. Um, and so you'll notice the soap batter start to kind of form a, a more pale, uh, opaque sort of a coloring. And that means it's starting, the, the fat molecules from the oils are start, starting to emulsify with the lye water. And that is what this whole process is about, is creating soap from lye and water and oils. And... Uh, that's what creates soap, and it's amazing how different oils and combinations thereof can create different varieties of soap. It's amazing. But anyway, I won't bar you with the details, so I'm just going to let this go. I'm going to fast forward through it, and uh, 
we're just going to basically stick blend and twirl and stick blend. And then here I'm going to pour off some batter for my next color because I'm splitting this batch into two colors here. And so we've just split that off about halfway. I'm going to pour a little bit back, I think. Um, oops, and I kind of made a spill there. That's okay. That's why we keep paper towels on hand. Paper towels are your best friend when you're making soap. Um, they, they help you out a lot. And uh, they just, yep, see I'm pouring a little bit back. I poured a little too much. But paper towels, let me tell you, if you ever make soap, paper towels are your friend. But this is, as I said, an ocean breeze soap. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two different blues, and I'm just going to do a drop swirl with this one. Here, you'll notice I have my two different blues. In hindsight, I would have made my darker blue a little bit darker and put in some navy. 
I really ended up only just using the one blue colorant. And um, I think I probably should have added some darker variants to make it, give it a little bit more body. But I like how it turned out, so it wasn't too far off from what I was wanting. But the, uh, the light blue turned out beautifully, as always. Um, but uh, it's, I gotta tell you guys, this soap smells so good. It's like a stormy ocean breeze. It's just the best. I just love how those smell. And always, just something else to keep in mind, always have a paper towel on hand to rest all your tools on so you don't have to keep track of them elsewhere. That way you know where they are. I'm just going to line my soap mold here. Now, I use a slab mold. Um, just helps me make multiple loaves at a time. I'm still mastering the, <laughs> the right thickness for my... Um, like the right size that I want my bars. So I keep experimenting with different molds, but I gotta say this one's a whole lot of fun. It's a tall, skinny mold. Um, so it makes three loaves that are tall and skinny. And as you can see, my light blue started to um, accelerate on me quite a bit, but that actually worked out in my favor. It gave me the big wavy clumps I was looking for, which was handy in hindsight, but Really, all I had to do was stir it. I just didn't remember to stir it before I poured it. And uh, this is what water fragrances generally do, no matter who you are. Um, they accelerate trace. So if you have a nice light trace, by the time you pour it, you'll have a medium or heavy trace. So it's just something to keep in mind. You want to keep your designs pretty simple so that you have time to work with them. You know, if you're using a essential oil, you're going to have a lot more time than you would with something like this. So I'm just going to top that off with the rest of the blue. I did end up having a little bit extra blue. Um, I'm still figuring out the correct percentage of ingredients for this particular mold because it's a hair smaller than my other mold. And supposedly they both hold the same size, but it's just a hair different. So it's just enough to, to make some extra bars. Um, just to have around the house. So I did, I did end up pouring some extra little hand bars for, for the family. And, uh, I don't remember if I filmed that or not. So we'll see if you see that. But other than that, you'll see me come right to the top and then I'll stop. Um, but I actually like how this one turned out. It turned out really, really well. I did really enjoy it. And you'll see how it turns out here in a minute. So I have to uh, confess I'm not the best at pouring into small spaces, as you can see. Uh, my very artistic pouring methods have rendered me a little bit of overspill, but that's okay. I've just kind of accepted that as uh, part of my lot as a soap maker. So I just plan for messes, and then, you know, that way I'm never unprepared. I just carry around paper towels in bulk, pretty much, because um, there's always a spill or five. Um but anyway, I'm kind of glad I filmed that because it's always kind of fun to see pouring into little tiny molds versus a big one. Um, and that particular mold is a flexible one. It holds, I think, 12 bars, I believe. Uh, they're a little bit large bars. They're, they're about 5-ounce bars, 6-ounce bars, which is kind of a lot for a small... They're chunky. You know, they're kind of... They're thick and they're not very long, so they're kind of a challenge to hold on to, but they work for us. Around the house, it's fine. But um, anyway, I'm going to leave this for about 18 to 24 hours, and I will see you guys before the cut.
here we are, 24 hours later. There is a side cut. I've already cut these into loaves. And then I have my very fancy uh, slicer here. It's actually a cheese board slicer, but it works great for soap. Um, it's pretty easy to clean, and quite frankly, I like it a lot. It's easier to store than a big one. But I'm just cutting these into slices. Look at how that turned out. I actually quite like it. Um, I wanted some big blobs of things to look like a big storm, so it worked out pretty well. But I'm just cutting these into um, inch thick slices. And these bars will weigh about five to five and a half ounces, depending on how the drying process goes. And uh, so as we go through this, I'm gonna fast forward through this whole process because I go through all three loaves, but look at how beautiful that is. I love that every single bar is different no matter what loaf you're cutting from. There's no two bars that are the same. And I love it. And you know, and, you, know you can always cut these in half at home and make them into two bars yourself. So. That's always an option. Anyway, I will be fast forwarding through the rest of this and you can see what it looks like. And I'll see you at the end. So as you can see, I'm just trimming up my last bar here. This loaf makes about 30 bars or so, which is usually my biggest batch. I just love how this soap turned out. It's just beautiful and it smells amazing. This is a good soap for men, women, children, anybody, you name it, they'll like it. It's very simple, but beautiful. It's a great one. I just love this one. And this is how it turned out. I just think it turned out so well. And it's got that silver mica on the stamp. And it just turned out great. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time. Music